Yes, hey, hello again everybody and Merry Christmas and welcome to another Farm Report, end of year edition. Just so much has happened since my last Farm Report vid as that was back in March, right before the first lockdown began. And I had my first tenants arrive and that really changed up everything here. Not only because it picked up the momentum with more people here pushing things along, but suddenly with the world in crisis, all the reasons I came here suddenly made so much sense and I was able to see clearly that I would be staying here long term. I wouldn't have to choose between holding on to this place and spending my time in Europe and the amazing effect that that had because I know deep down what is able to be achieved in 5 years, 10 years, 20 years is just incredible and with the way things are going here it's just so exciting to think of everything that I've got planned. It's all going to happen one day. So obviously back in March we took a look at the barn before Rob and Haley and their family moved in and they've just really thrown themselves into making it their own thing. Especially since the main thing with these guys is that they are really into their animals and, and the biggest thing for me is that they've gone ahead and made a commitment to all these animals and that's going to have to be something that's worked through. It's not easy dealing with animals. They look cute and they're friendly but the reality is there is a lot to deal with. So it really is a process of building up and breaking in which is full of trial and error but because of the crisis worldwide it's easy for me to see that I can't lose here which is great because I can just start developing my place and cruise. So now I've let Rob take the greenhouse because they needed space and it's near their area and I found with my garden I needed to keep it more versatile, efficient and water conscious. Drought and the issues we had with the drought last year when I made the last video will be a theme we come back to. Basically my whole garden here, it died right back. But I'm still interested in this food forest idea of creating self-propagating areas of abundant food. So in this garden I've just gone with this complete low maintenance approach of letting this just grow and go to seed. And we still have a watermelon patch, grapevine here, and a couple of apple trees, peach trees back there, and a lemon, um, an avocado down here. This was where I was doing a lot of work over winter, widening out this dam, so um, that I had this inlet here. So the water would reach my plants, and I could raise up a bank so it wasn't so swampy. And this is where you will meet our second tribe of duckies, the Pekins. Our original was a group of three males Indian running ducks, big boys. None of these breeds can fly and these uh, Rob and Haley got free online and we just let them go to see what would happen. And they do wander for a week or more but they always come back. But they tend to hang out down this other end of the dam here so obviously the big attraction with ducks is that they are low maintenance. They don't produce as many eggs as chickens but here they don't require the same care and you'll see we got a couple of plums and a couple of peaches coming on again. I've planted some more pines along the line here next to the manukas so we get some privacy from the road across this way and uh, less of the awful wind from the southwest which is a constant issue and I'm really into the idea of more blueberries. The bushes live 30 years or more and they're naturally compatible with pines, pine needles. And so now uh, we come to our little bridge here that my dad built. It actually looks very aesthetic from the road when you drive in. It's a bit overgrown here now with all this spring growth. But this is where I really started to see how nice it was with the ducks and the bridge. And if I leap forward a little bit in the story of how I developed my plans, I will tell you how I started to realize that I am surrounded here by an 80 hectare farm and it's just a couple of chilled out Filipino guys who milk the cows and basically unlike the city there is nobody here who has a problem with me doing what I damn like all around the boundaries and uh, the roadside here to my property like there is in the city. You can't do what you like because people will pull you up. Out here, as long as the cows get milked, no one cares what you do. I began to think there's nothing stopping me tidying up this dirty creek and making a pleasant walkway with pleasant greenery that cows tend not to eat. And the Filipino guys who herd the cows along here every day are not going to care. 
Whereas Rob and Haley have their own space up here for their goats and sheep. Which again, I'm slowly working out how I can use these animals to cut down the maintenance I need to do on the place. Well, I can do something pleasant to stroll along here and this actually leads to a much longer ring path that actually leads right around and back to the other side of the farm but it allows me to space out my place without anyone really caring and really give it an expansive feeling of a real adventure trail. It's a lot of work but because I know I'm here long term I can dream big. But the immediate issue was that I had to let my garden die back last summer because of the drought. We couldn't risk running out of water. And there was a process where I discovered that collecting the water wasn't the problem. It was storing all the water that was being collected because as soon as I realized I would have no problem getting tenants here, what I realized was that the more lush the place was with trees and gardens, the more attractive it would be to uh, as a rental proposition the more I could charge, especially as water shortages made it commonplace for the land to appear parched and brown in summer. So I started to realize it actually adds a lot of prestige, that my place looks lush and aesthetic, salubrious even. Well, our two biggest issues is the trees uh, running along the southwest side where the prevailing wind comes from, plants, humans, animals, nothing like sweeping wind coming through a valley. And the second issue being holding enough water to keep the place looking lush and keep these trees going hard when the reality is trees do struggle with the wind and the heat. But as more trees establish themselves, there's more wind resistance, more moisture retention in the soil. And that's where I came up with the idea of this pond. And you know we'll have a retaining wall with trees going behind it to begin creating more sheltered spaces where we can have the ducks just chilling out, maybe fish. I like the self-reliant idea that food is all around me. If the world goes to hell, I will survive. But also, when I'm older, it will simply be a pleasant space. And so on the other side of the pond there, I'm planning what's called a hexa yurt. It's an efficiently designed temporary building designed to be the strongest possible building at the lowest possible price. It's only costing me $600 in plywood and timber. And then we have the citrus trench which is based on how they grow oranges in Ukraine. Which has great summers and great soil but harsh freezing winters. So it's been a bit heartbreaking that the goats have tenaciously gone after all my feed I was here because it has been hard to get these trees going. But it's as I say, what you're seeing is the ugly stage where things are being sewn together and it's rough. And at the center point here, I have another experiment, a, 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 a wallopini, which is the term for a greenhouse that is set into the ground. Another technique used in various cold countries to grow food longer and this allows me to extend my growing season also. Also once again cutting off that wind across here. So in the future I can see my gla glade of oranges with a little stream circling back towards the pond. But turning to the right here is the site of the big new action because we did have another tenant here and because they were a couple and they were able to bring this temporary cabin and we uh, we were able to run electricity and water cable out from the house I was completely inspired but because they were a couple I didn't want them so close to the house in case they were out there having tiffs outside my window which was just as bloody well because they ended up at each other's throats and we had the cops out here so they had to go but I was already inspired by the idea of having this kind of cabin here and it's still not clear if I will be able to leave the country next winter so I just decided to sink my money into a cabin of my own because what I realized was that without a building or something solid and decent to offer people I wasn't really going to attract the right people here so um, just more just people who were desperate to make anything at all work and I had to sense, see sense and know that what I've got going here is great and it's better to be patient 
because I know I will have another great family on the south side eventually and that will pay my bills when I'm back in Belarus, Georgia, Ukraine, all those people I love, all those places I love to head back to. And my path is actually pretty straight ahead. Sinking all my money into these cabins is going to see me up nice long term. So this area behind the house is pretty much my main gardening area. I am setting it up in advance so it's super enclosed from this wind. That's why I've got this solid shelter I'm building here. I will have a deck here off my office and I've started a lean to over here which is basically a utility area where I can set some stuff up like freezers, washing machines, so that in the future if we have people in these cabins using solar power, they've still got a central point where they won't need freezers and washing machines taking up their space, using a, a lot of their power, using their water. So it takes pressure off anyone in an off-grid situation here, having that stuff um, that's here connected to the mains of the house. But mainly it is about shelter again. You, you may think this area doesn't get a lot of sun, but that's why I handed the greenhouse over to Robin Haley because I quickly realized sun is not the big issue. Drought is the issue in summer, and frost is the issue, either side of the growth at growing season. And having an enclosed sheltered space protects plants from harsh sun and early or late frosts. And the more I've learned, the more I realize it's best for me to grow my best plants in containers while I'm still figuring out what I'm doing because we've had a few of Rob and Haley's rabbits escape and the only way they survive is if they find their way to under the house and now we have these, these cute little bunnies running around but no broccoli, no leafy greens, no carrots are safe unless I put them up high but it's all about learning to live with the animals because the ducks then the rabbits and now sheep as well they are all nice to have around it promotes a sense of well-being that animals plants and humans are here and they are coexisting it's the natural way it's supposed to be so on though we'll have to get another water tank eventually just because of the modern state of economics your money is worth nothing if it's in the bank any way you can turn your money into a long-term investment is a great move and drought and having lots of water stored will uh, never ever be a wrong move here with what we're facing in the future. This area does not flood. It's a raised valley. There's no erosion, no tsunami, no shortage of resources as long as we accept it does not rain in summer here anymore. And we need enough water to not just survive, but actually cap capitalize on how hot and long the summers will be getting. It's actually a bonus as long as we have enough water. So I will do another pond down the other end because it's the same idea. Build up the bank, collect the water, and create a moist and sheltered microenvironment that stays lush like an oasis over summer and allows us to build up more dense collections of trees so more moisture is retained and the effect compounds. And as I say, there will be another family here in this section here one day. But other than the trees, I already realized it's best at the early stages to let the tenant decide what they would like to do with the space to suit their needs. It will be so much easier to manage as the structures here develop over time. So I'm very patient about that. But there is just two more things I wanted to mention before I wrap up the end of the year report. And it really was about the way it hit me that your boundaries and your limits out here in the country are vastly different from the city because of that specific thing I chose about this property. Other than its location, it was a real starter project here. No neighbours. There's nobody to tell me what I can and can't do on the side of the road. What I discovered was this new little area here which I call the cow garden because once again it's about confronting the challenges of animals and I've dealt with goats and rabbits and dogs digging and chewing so suddenly it didn't in intimidate the me the kind of ideas I could work with over here in this, this boggy grove where there is some traces that there was a house here possibly when my house was originally built in 1930. 
if the grove with all these fallen logs and branches that the farmer does not care about, I can do my own kind of garden based actually on having cows running around in it. And as the lifestyle I've got going on here takes off with more working from home, remote work, working, people needing less to be in the city, you may know that the train to Auckland stops in Huntley now. That's 10 minutes away. The idea of integrating yourself into the countryside, which is you know, where our white gold flows, allows lots of new ideas about the kind of environment we live in, how we use it, and this is the farmer's property, and although this clearly isn't his prime grazing area, it had here what I don't have on my property, and that is huge shelter and shade from these trees here. It's so much nicer to work here, and of course the cows are the only issue. The goats, the dogs, the rabbits, they don't come over here. And if the farmer, who barely shows up because he has his workers here, um, ever asks me, I will just say I'm building a fort for the kids. And why the hell not? He sold me my house in the first place, so I don't see what his problem is. So we'll go back to the house. Um, you will see Robin Haley's sheep I borrowed to take care of my lawn. And I helped learning to cut one up, and I am really getting into it, looking after the animals, making sure they have a nice life, and then making use of the animal for different purposes, munching the lawn, fresh organic food, fresh organic meat, fertilizer, even the sheepskin with the sheep. It's not a business at all. It's a lifestyle. I'm not doing ducks and sheep and growing strawberries in the attic um, because it's going to make me rich. I'm going to do it because I'm looking at self-reliance and sustainability and resilience. And you have to understand, it's more than just imagining it. When the sun is shining down and you are watching the rabbits and the sheep on the front lawn and you're eating your delicious fresh strawberries, you know the sense of peace that comes over you. This is right. This is how we are meant to live. This is harmony. So all those things are certainly looking a bit rough still around here as things come together. I have huge confidence that comes from knowing I've got a massive time window stretching out in front of me for the rest of my life to bring these elements together and knowing these plans allow me to develop more elaborate concepts that you will be able to catch up with next time I do my next farm report but there will be much more farm content lining up because I'm hoping to bring these farm visuals together with two other things I'm passionate about learning Russian language and producing my beats so until next time I've got some new vibes to share from my little farm down here I will wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year until we will catch up once again. Das Vidanya!